This week I'll show you how you can eavesdrop on pager messages using an inexpensive software-defined radio. Let's get started. This project starts with an inexpensive USB software-defined radio. This is the exact same radio I used in my previous project about tracking airplanes. The radio came with this little magnetic antenna. I find that it actually works for this. I just stick it on an old cookie sheet. Now we plug the antenna in and plug in the radio. First we need to install a custom USB driver. To do this I use a program called Zadig. Load up Zadig and then go to options and list all devices. Then open the drop down box and pick the RTL device. Make sure the driver says Win USB. And then go ahead and install it. And in just a moment, the driver's installed. Next, we need to way to pipe the audio output from the tuner program into the pager program. To do this, I use a free program called VB Cable. Once you extract the VB Cable files, you can go ahead and run the installer. Make sure you run it as an administrator. Then click install. That part's a piece of cake. Next open up the properties for that VB Cable audio device. Then go to advanced. And make sure the sample rate is set to at least 48,000 Hz. Next we're going to install SDR Sharp. SDR Sharp is the software that will actually control the USB radio and allow you to tune to all the different frequencies. When downloading this program, scroll down on the main site and choose this installation script. This script includes the plugin required to use the RTL devices. So let's go ahead and run the installer script. This script will download all the latest files. Now before running the program, open the sdrsharp.exe config file. You can just open it with notepad. Scroll down a bit and find the min output sample rate. Change this value to be at least 48,000 Hz. Then save the file and go ahead and open SDR Sharp. Now on the top left we have to choose the RTL device. Then we'll set the radio to narrow FM and change the filter bandwidth to about 25,000. Then we'll turn off the squelch and set the audio output to that virtual cable device we installed earlier. This will allow us to pipe the output from this program to the pager decoder program. Go ahead and press play. The waterfall will start and it'll look something like this, although yours will more likely be more yellow and less red. The red lines usually indicate signals, but I actually had my cell phone laying on the antenna cable when I recorded this, which explains why it looks so weird. Now we need to tune the radio to a frequency where we know there's pager mess. I spent some time earlier manually scanning around the pager frequency ranges until I found one that sounded like it had pager noises. My radio seems to have a problem tuning directly in the middle of the band. To get around this, I click off to the side. That'll focus the tuning off the center of the band. Then I can actually tell the radio to tune to the known pager frequency. Once I remove my cell phone, it looks something like this. The dark red lines indicate a signal. You can see how the signals come and go. These are pager signals. Every now and then it sends out a little burst. So you need to search around until you find one of these signals. How do you know you found it? It should sound something like this. Now that we're tuned into a pager signal, let's open PDW. This program will decode pager messages. First we need to change some of the options. Make sure that POC SAG is enabled and all bit rates are also enabled. We also want to make sure flex is all enabled. Then we set the interface. Make sure serial ports disabled and the sound card is enabled. 
We'll set this to speaker out one. Make sure the sample rate is set, and the sound card is set to our virtual cable. Looking on the top right of the window, you can see the little VU meter. It's bouncing up and down. This is a good sign. That means it's detecting the audio from SDR Sharp. Now all we need to do is wait for a clear signal to come through, and PDW should automatically decode it. If you're having trouble, you may need to adjust your volume or gain settings to make sure the signal's not too quiet and not too loud. I left mine running overnight to see what kind of messages I would find, and I was actually really surprised. There are a lot of random things still using this. For example, I saw some people were sending their phone numbers, there were ambulance calls, there were messages from hospitals, maintenance messages, even IT alerts. Because some of these messages contain private information, I've blurred them out here to protect the innocent. But you can see how much I picked up just overnight. Here are some close-up examples. You can see this first page is a numeric type. It only contains a callback number. The second message is an alphanumeric type. It contains letters and numbers. You can see this one involves something about an ambulance, an emergency, etc, etc. You can see my signal wasn't so great, so not all the letters were decoded properly. Here's another interesting example. So that's a little bit scary. For under $30, you can pick up one of these radios and just start reading everybody's pager messages in the area. I would guess most of these people don't even realize that it's possible. I would assume that my information's encrypted when I send it over the air like that, but technology's kind of old and I'm guessing it just wasn't in place back then, and it's just carried over to today. It really makes you think twice about the kind of stuff you send over the air. Remember, use these skills for good and not evil. And if you like these videos, please like or subscribe to let me know.